Hi, welcome to Rainy Dewey's Art Spot. Today's video I'm going to focus on uh, trying to develop one of the scenes that I found so inspirational on my recent trip to the Richmondville Antique Barn. I took a video on the way home and uh, could do some, I could do some still shots uh, on the video and that's how I drew my inspiration out of the video itself. So what I'm going to do now is develop that still shot into a value sketch and a color study. This is the prep work that you're going to want to do before you begin to tackle your final, hopefully, masterpiece. So get your pencils, get your paint, and get yourself a sketchbook, and let's get started. Okay, what you can see here is uh, my sketchbook. You can see I've uh, given myself borders. It's just a light triangle of a small size. I made it a small size because this value sketch is not supposed to be a finished drawing. This is going to be your roadmap for your values where your darks and lights go. Now your darks and lights are your design elements. Um, they guide the viewer to your focal point. So those are things you'll have to think about. Um, you can see the photograph that I'm using above is actually pretty high key. It's pretty light. And so I'm going to have to draw out my values myself. That's part of being an artist. Uh, you can see here, like the buildings in that little value sketch are so small that um, I had to give myself a little detail on the side. Uh, these are the paints. I use uh, tube paints. You can see I have a few different kinds that I've purchased over the years. Uh, those you squeeze out into your palette. You can let them dry and then re-wet them so it's nice to uh, use tube paints. And then this is how I begin my color study. Again, I give myself a border. I'm trying to nail down the colors that I'm going to use and how I'm going to get there. I take notes. Um, some colors I have committed to memory on how to mix because I've done it over the years so many times. But it never hurts to reinforce it. So I give you a sample of what the color actually is. So you can see I'm mixing those oranges. It's a uh, those colors are quinacridone gold and transparent pyroli orange. Um, two different manufacturers on those, I believe. And so I give you a sample of what they look like raw from the tube, and then I mix them in varying concentrations of water and vary, various concentrations of each hue to give you different uh, values of the same tone. So. Let me just let you watch and I'll stop yattering for a minute. <laughs> what I'm doing here is um, I want to have those grasses in the foreground along the road be a gold color so I'm mixing myself a purple which is the color complement to the yellow and so that will gray it down and give me a darker uh, value along you can see that it's on the edge of the road right near the ground it's a little darker and it's matching up hopefully to the value sketch that I have above. It's pretty amazing that if you do a value sketch um, and a color study, once you begin the actual painting itself, you'll rely more on your value sketch and your color study than you do on the photograph. And so I think that frees you a little bit more to just paint with uh, a more relaxed um, approach especially if you've done all your homework, you don't have to try to figure out and remember as it goes how to mix these colors. So that one's um, yellow ochre plus quinacridone magenta plus cobalt. That's the purple. Quinacridone magenta and cobalt made the purple. That was a color complement to the yellow ochre.
So you can see now I'm mixing a red. Um, most of the um, reference shot is yellows and oranges. A lot of the reds are past now because we're past peak, but there was one tree down there that was red. That's what, what that's where you as an artist can make a decision. Do you want to keep it or do you want to eliminate it? Do you want to make things the values darker and more dramatic or do you want to leave it a high key painting? These are decisions that you make along the way. Um, when you're using uh, photo reference, you don't have to be a slave to it. You can decide on um, what you want to keep and what you want to change. Okay, now is when I'm trying to punch up the values and get them to match up to my value sketch. Doing the distant mountains, um, I'm doing a little test. This is a layering and glazing that I'm going to have to do. Very, very thin washes, one built over the other, because the distant mountains still have color in them. They're still oranges and purples and greens so I just don't want to make them as prominent as the foreground. So that's it. We've got we've done our homework. We're ready to tackle our final painting and uh, you can look for that in an upcoming video. Thanks for watching everyone. Leave a comment, subscribe, and a thumbs up if you're so inclined.